Today, we're going to sort these three items for this 150 Prado. Okay, when you go to remove the side rails, after you've taken the covers off, you'll notice that there's, there's five bolts on each side just to get the actual rail off. They're just 12mm bolts. Uh, 12mm head, should I say. Um, something I just would like to show you is when you take one of these bolts out, there is actually, you can see there, it's, it's a form of Loctite, but what is also is to stop any water going down the thread. So when you put these back in, when you put the new bolts back in, it is worth having something on that thread to stop water from running down in between the thread. But um, yeah, we've never had an issue with it with other installs, but I'll show you as we go forward what we use to, to solve that problem. The next thing we're gonna fit is these uh, stick-on tabs that go just below the bolts. Um, pretty simple to put on. What I have done is I've just sprayed around each with some brake cleaner just to make sure that they stick correctly. Um, I didn't actually film that, but um, so I've just cleaned up each hole. Um, these will go in around each hole pretty simply um, and they stick to the, the base around. And this is just to prevent or try to prevent any water leaking into any of the holes. Okay, one of the mods I've made to the side of the backbone is I've put a accessory socket directly into one of the holes. It fits perfectly around the center. Uh, come out, just some nice dual heat shrink on the back. So if any water coming in, the reason I've done this is we're going to install the 23-0 tent on the driver's side. Um, this is purely gonna be really like a toilet tent for when we're out free camping. Um, it'll make more sense when I do a walkthrough later on on the camper trailer so we can show you what we've done on that. Um, yeah, but at this stage, it's just a good thing to do that. Um, um, I've just used a black two-pin door connector because I just want everything to, to remain as inconspicuous as possible. So yeah, I'll show you some other mods to the Rhino rack we've done before we put it on. But yeah, we'll get these backbones on and crack on. We've done some modifications to this Rhino Rack to make mm. some stuff fit. Mm. Um, the first one being to run the wiring down here, which I don't know if you can see it in there, which the tubing is running all the way through here and all the way down here. Um, and what I've done is I've mounted an accessory socket at the rear here. That is for the lights and the bushwhacker awning. Um, so I've put a plate on that. I've mounted this with tap threads into an alloy plate here. I've also cut this out with a die grinder so I can take these um, captive nuts through this slide um, so that I can screw it in. Um, then we've ran the, the tubing all the way down under each of these um, cross beams. Um, we've slid in the, the captive bolts. Um, we've mounted the light bar for the roof also. Um, I am going to not finalize this wiring until I actually understand where it's going to come out. Um, each car is different. You can move these cross beams forward and backwards and you can actually have the whole rack move in, in either direction. So we'll get this rack on. Um, and oh, sorry, the other thing I've done is I've ran the tubing across the back here, down the other section here, and this is where the Deutz plug comes out for the accessory socket that I've mounted in the side of the backbone. So yeah, we'll get this rack on and carry on.
Okay guys, got the roof rack on. If you have a look down here, there's a little strip here of rubber. That just comes out really, really simply. Um, we've just found two lots of three mil twin um, under there at the moment. I've just got this rag there because I keep getting sick of flex on the car. Um, this section is a bit more painful. There's four blue clips under there. Um, which you're better off starting from the bottom I've found here and just peel it forward slightly and just get a pick in there and pick one out. Um, I always put them back on, I put a little bit of sickle flex on each of the um, connectors and I just push it down and just keep it there for for a couple of hours just to make sure it stays there. Um, it just comes under this panel here, it sits in under here, it runs under this piece here and comes out here. Um, this is, I've got the one Generally what I do when I'm running cables like this is I mark the cable by just stripping an end. Um, that I know is for the lights. Um, uh, for the, the light bar. And this is for the, um, the lights. Uh, the power that's gone to the accessory sockets for the awning and the shower tent. So yeah, we'll get this wired up and we'll go from there. Okay guys, so it's finally done. The roof rack's on there. So I just thought I'd take you a quick walk around. So there's the accessory socket I've got under here for the bushwhacker awning. Um, I didn't have it coming out the other side because I was unsure of where this was going to fit in. In hindsight, I could have probably spun it, but it doesn't matter. I can quite easily get my hand in there to unplug that and through the top. So um, around the other side is where we got the plug for the lights in the 23-0 shower tent will come out this side. I'm unsure where I'm going to mount that exactly yet. Um, the wiring runs down the side um, over to this side. Excuse the state of the engine bay. We just did a very very dusty trip. Um, so it just comes through here. Uh, the wiring for the light bar connects up to the existing wiring for the spotlights here and I've, I've adjusted that fuse accordingly. That's gone up to a 30 from a 20 um, and the other wiring comes across all the way across um, and hooks up to the second battery just used as 10 amp at this stage I'm unsure until I get all the lights on I'm assuming it'd be closer to 7.5 but we'll leave it as a 10 for now until I measure it um, yeah so we just got the winch circuit breaker a couple of circuit breaks for the dual battery and the BCDC which is obviously mounted down here um, we'll have a good look at this car in the future um, there's lots of mods that have been done to this car so quite a good one to have a look at um, yeah, at this stage, that's it for today, unfortunately. Um, I've run out of time. Um, I have to actually go pick up the engine for the little race car that's um, done at the engine builders. So I've got to grab that today. And we're going to throw that in over the next few weeks. We'll show you guys that as well. Um, so, yeah, thanks for coming along today, guys. It's been awesome. Um, oh, there's the light bar as well. So that's sitting up there, I'll turn that on, that all works fine. I had that actually lying around the workshop, that light bar, and I stuck with it purely because it, I love the black lens. It's just a whole light bar, it's nothing fancy. Um, so, but yeah, when I get the car out, in the sunlight, I'll go over everything, and I'll show you all the mods we've done to this car, and yeah, we'll go from there. So, yeah. Thanks for watching, guys. The next, I'll try to film tomorrow. I'll try to put in the Bushwhacker warning, which is, already here set ready to go um and have the 23-0 shouts in on the floor there as well so i'll un just unboxing this at the moment having a look the brackets are a little bit higher than i originally anticipated so i might have to make some brackets i'm not sure whether i'll make them out of billet yet or whether i'll just make some mild steel ones um yeah and then um yeah i don't think it's going to fit under the carport so that could be a bit of an issue all right thanks guys bye